Welcome back to another episode of the e-learning series on GFSM, the Government Finance Statistics Manual. In this episode, I will introduce you to the GFSM framework, explain its analytical measures, and show you how it can support fiscal analysis. Suppose the government wants to build and exploit a toll road. The finance minister estimates 10 million in toll receipts per year. The cabinet is euphoric and decides to implement the plan. Let us assess the fiscal impact of that measure. The 10 million is probably not quite all there is to it. And indeed, there are some details to be added if we look at the first year of the toll roads operations. First, there are wages to be paid for the toll collectors. Maintenance and other operational costs will also apply. Then, of course, there must have been capital spending for the road and supporting structures. Also, charges for the wear and tear of those assets. What about financing? The government probably has taken out a loan to pay for the road or issued bonds. And there will be interest payments and later on debt repayments. I hope the finance minister's staff recorded all these factors. The fact is the GFSM was set up to deal with it. It is a fully integrated framework similar to commercial accounting and a very flexible tool. Let me show you how the framework has a place for everything and thereby supports a sound fiscal analysis. First, let's look at the operating flows, revenue and expense. That refers to all transactions that affect the net worth of the government. So let us classify the respective flows. The toll receipts will add to net worth, that's revenue. Wages, maintenance and other costs, interest payments and the charges for the wear and tear of the assets called consumption of fixed capital in statistics. All those flows decrease net worth and are clearly expenses. Subtract the expenses from the revenue and we are left with a GFSM balancing item called the net operating balance. Now I can see the minister smiling. The 3 million surplus is an indicator of the operational performance. It means the government has improved its net worth from operating the toll road. What about the acquisition of the road and the toll booth? The capital spending. GFSM refers to investment in a non-financial asset. This spending is different from expenses since the government receives an asset in exchange, so net worth is not affected. More precisely, the net investment of such assets is measured, which means we subtract disposals and the consumption of fixed capital from the acquisitions. In the example, the initial investment amounts to 100 million. For net investment, we have to subtract the consumption of fixed capital for this period. The finance minister is pleased, but wants more information to see the financial impact. If we subtract the net investment in non-financial assets from the net operating balance, we will get a second GFSM balancing item, net lending borrowing. This is a measure of the net change of the value of all financial assets and liabilities. In the example, this amounts to a negative 95 million, meaning the government has a borrowing requirement of 95 million. Of course, if the sign were positive, the government would have a lending capacity. But how does the finance minister know by how much the government's financial assets change? For instance, the cash in bank accounts. This is where GFSM's double entry bookkeeping will help. It means that every economic event is recorded in two places in the framework. Two entries for the same event, but why? Put simply, the major benefit is that you can separate the value of a transaction from the way it materializes in changes of stocks. The second entries help us see the links between revenue expense, investment in non-financial assets, and the financial assets and liabilities. It also provides an internal consistency check of the analytical framework. In the example, revenue and expenses directly affect financial assets. The toll receipts increase assets, most likely in the form of cash or accounts receivable. Accounts receivable are broadly speaking amounts due. Expenses decrease financial assets, most likely in the form of cash. Alternatively, expenses could increase our liabilities, for instance, as an account payable. You see that with a double entry system, we can clearly record the value of revenue and at the same time provide details on how government stock positions are affected. The government takes out a loan of 100 million to finance the acquisition of the road. This is recorded as an increase in liabilities. The second entries for the non-financial investment and the financing are both in the stock of cash. But they have the opposite sign, so the net impact is zero. 
we are left with a change of net financial worth of negative 95 million, which equals 5 million cash deposits minus 100 million liabilities incurred. Exactly the net borrowing we observed earlier. Now all events have been captured in a systematic way in the framework. We've recorded all of the flows that are referred to as transactions in GFSM. And with this information, we can do much more. We can integrate stock and flow information. The GFSM is based on a balance sheet approach. First, the opening stocks. From those, we can calculate government's net worth, the value of all assets, less liabilities. And the recorded transactions will add to those opening values and explain how the stocks change throughout the year. The GFSM framework is almost complete. We only need to consider that stock values can also change by events other than transactions. Think of exchange rates affecting the value of financial assets denominated in foreign currency, or market price changes for equities and bonds, or think of damages to non-financial assets, for example, the destruction of the road by an earthquake. Such flows affect the value of stocks and thereby net worth, but they are different from transactions because they don't result from interactions with another party. That's why GFSM records them separately as other economic flows. Other economic flows can change the value of stocks. If we show them as a separate column of the framework, we have captured all stocks and flows relevant for fiscal analysis. With this included, let's look at the bigger picture, the GFS framework. Transactions provide very useful analytical information. Key aggregates like revenue, expense, non-financial investment, acquisition of financial assets, and incurrence of liabilities. And two key balancing items, net operating balance and net lending borrowing. Note that the two balancing items serve different purposes. The net operating balance explains the operational performance and the resulting change in net worth. Net lending borrowing shows the usage of financial resources and will help you understand the interaction with financial markets. Meanwhile, the stocks provide data on total value of assets, total value of liabilities, net worth, net financial worth. The framework balances both vertically and horizontally. This means it is consistent and integrated. Even complex transactions can be covered in the framework. For example, the toll collection could be institutionalized in the form of a public corporation, a PPP, or a joint venture and so on. This could lead to very different types of economic transactions or toll receipts could be securitized and sold, or even the whole structure could be sold off. The GFSM helps derive meaningful recording methods irrespective of the legal or institutional form and thereby supports fiscal analysis of these cases. So what can the finance minister report? Not only is the toll road good for the fiscal position, the GFSM framework brought out the benefits of integrated accounting. So it was easy to convince the cabinet to invest a toll road surplus in a brand new double entry accrual based accounting system. This means the source data for GFS will improve further.